So question eight on the summer 2011 or four. A curve has parametric equations x equals one over t plus one, y equals two minus one. The line y equals three x intersects the curve at two points. Show that the value of t at one of these points is minus two and find the value of t at the other point. Um, so, th this is actually, this is just as easy as it looks. If we're saying that y equals 3x, then let's just set this up, y equals 3x. So, y, which is t minus 1, equals 3 times x. Let's, let's write that. y equals 3x, that implies that y, t minus 1, is 3 times x. So 3 times 1 over t plus 1. There's a great start. Um, I want to get all of the unknowns together. I want to multiply both sides by t plus 1. So t plus 1 times t minus 1 equals 3. It's, it's really nice how this is all falling together now. t squared minus 1 is 3 because that's the difference of two squares. Bring the 3 over to join it, we've got t squared minus 4 equals 0. Ah, lovely isn't it? Factorises as t minus 2, t plus 2, and there we are, just as it said, t at one of these points is minus 2, there it is. So the other value of t is plus 2. There we go. Two marks. Find the equation of the normal to the curve at the point at which t equals minus 2. So it doesn't necessarily relate to this, but, but this is just this should be a standard thing that we're really used to doing. So if we're going to find the equation of the normal, we need to know dy by dx. So we need to differentiate each of these things. We had that x is 1 over t plus 1. If you like, we can think of that as being t plus 1 to the minus 1. This is the kind of differentiation thing that we learnt in core 3 at the restart of core 3 in the summer. What do we get if we differentiate t plus 1 to the minus 1? ln t plus 1. If we differentiate oh, it. Um, minus t plus 1 to minus 2. Yeah. And I'm glad you did that, Harry, because that illustrates the really easy thing to do, isn't it? You, you come into core 4 and you're thinking core 4 is all about integration. If you learnt all your integration, you end up doing something simple, but integrating instead of differentiating, you're getting completely the wrong thing. Um, if we differentiate this one, dy by dt would just be 1, wouldn't it? If we differentiate t minus 1, we get 1. So dy by dx. And I would find dy by dx first. Don't try and do anything clever about it being the normal. Find dy by dx and then work from there. This is the dy by dt over dx by dt. So that's 1 over minus t plus 1 to the minus 2. Well actually, this whole thing is negative, but if we're dividing by t plus 1 to the minus 2, then that's the same as multiplying by t plus 1 squared, isn't it? Okay, that, that negative power on the bottom there becomes a positive power on the top. Okay, so that's the value of dy by dx. Now we wanted to know the normal at the point where t is minus 2. So let's work through from there. If t equals minus 2, dy by dx would be sub minus 2 into there. We get minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So our gradient is negative 1. 
of the tangent. So the normal gradient is the negative reciprocal of that. So the normal gradient is just 1. Uh, we've also, we need to know x and y. If t equals minus 2, x equals minus 2 plus 1. So minus 1 to the minus 1, which is negative 1. y is minus 2, take away another 1, which is minus 3. We're back to core 1, was it, where we found equations of straight lines using y minus y1 is m x minus x1. This says that y plus 3 is x plus 1. And I think we would probably leave our answer as y plus x minus 2. That was 6 marks. Which compared to the 8 marks that we got a, little, a bit a few moments ago, that's pretty nice. Isn't it? Now there's still two more parts of this question to do. Find the value of t at the point where this, this normal meets the curve again. Well, actually, thinking back, when we found where y equals 3x met the curve, we just took our, our y and x expressions in terms of t and subbed them into that. So if we want to find where this line meets the curve again, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to take our expressions for x and y in terms of t and sub them into that. So at the next point of intersection, if we've got y equals x minus 2, then that means that y, t minus 1, is equal to x, 1 over t plus 1, minus 2. I would quite like to get back to the same kind of point as that before, where I can just multiply through by the t plus 1. I think first I'm going to add 2 to both sides. I think that would be a nice start point from that. And then multiply by the t plus 1. So we've got that. Are you alright, Rob? Yeah, yeah, fine. If we multiply this out, we've got t squared plus 2t plus 1 equals 1, or t squared plus 2t equals 0. Now, we already know that one of the values of t is minus 2, because that was the whole point that we started this. This was the normal when t equals minus 2. So we're hoping that that turned out to be one of our solutions. Factorise this, we get t brackets. 2 plus 2. So we have, we've got it, haven't we? We've got t equals 0 and t equals minus 2. So the value of t when it meets the curve again is 0. It meets the curve again at point t equals 0. Interestingly, the final three marks in this question are pretty much unconnected to anything that we've done before. But even if you got thoroughly confused earlier on in this question, this is part four now, even if you got thoroughly confused earlier on, you actually you could, you could still get these three marks. Find the Cartesian of the equation of the curve, giving your answer in the form y plus f of x. That means we need to eliminate t from our two equations. Um, however we choose to do that well, At first glance, it looks to me like it's easiest to say this one says that y, uh, t equals y plus 1, and then rearrange that. And that, that's probably quite an easy way to do it. You get that. The question did say, give you a final answer in the form y equals the function of x. So I'm just wondering, actually, if it might be slightly easier if I rearrange this bit and say that t plus 1 
is 1 over x, because that's true if we multiply by t plus 1 and divide by x. So t is 1 over x minus 1. But maybe, I don't know, it probably would just be easy to do it the other way, but I'll go that way and then I'll say therefore y equals 1 over x minus 1, minus 1, and so I get y equals 1 over x minus 2 as my y of the function of x. There we are. If you did it the other way, if you said that t equals y plus 1 and sub it today, you then have to rearrange your new equation to get y equals the function of x.